with John there. Um, I can't believe here I'm talking about your music in front of you. Um, there is a, um, a rhythmic impulse um, that has to come naturally from, I think, within your, your body makeup, your mind, the way you think about music, the way you feel rhythm, um, and the way you feel melody as well. But um, it was something that for me just, um, I knew from the very first time I heard John's music would be um, a natural suit to my style of playing, my way of playing, which um, I would say is, um, of course, had very strict education and earlier on a very traditional way of learning all the great classics. But I was also sort of um, restless and um, hungry for more um, adventure and more spontaneity and um, maybe just my own feeling of wanting to contribute to what I do in this art form and um, boom it just uh, clicked really beautifully. I used the term dramatic symphony for this. Um, I guess it's sort of a whimsical choice because uh, the term we always associate with Berlioz, uh, Damnation of Faust, or Romeo and Juliet. And I think Berlioz used the term uh, to indicate it, it would be a, a large scale piece that had some sort of a narrative to it. Um, I wanted to write a, a major piece for Lilo Josefovitz because uh, She's, she's been my muse for a long time. Uh, she's played my concerto, we think, possibly over a hundred times, lost count, and she's also played uh, uh, my work for electric violin and orchestra, the Dharma Big Sur, and road movies, and there's just something really extraordinary about her personality and her virtuosity. So, I ended up with this idea of a, of a piece that was uh, about Scheherazade and about a modern, empowered woman who uh, speaks truth to power, as, as the uh, meme goes, and uh, is, goes through some kind of trial and she, where she's harassed and chased by, uh, particularly by men, uh, either men who are you know, want to oppress her sexually or uh, are upset on, on religious grounds. She's tried, she's condemned to death, uh, and she escapes and she finds sanctuary. So I felt that, that there was enough of a narrative in it that it shouldn't be just a concerto, and that's why I use the term dramatic symphony. I think we're John and I are proud to say that there is no other piece for violin that is like this one in any way. Um, it's so amazing to think about a role for a piece um, and not just playing a great performance of a piece, but really on, a, on an emotional level, I am invested in this probably like none other. Um, and each time we get on stage and perform this, it's a voyage uh, for everyone and, and a, a huge one for me. <laughs> everyone wants to talk about collaboration in the arts and I, I think it, you know, it's such a popular topic and of course funders love it because you know, they think they get double the bang for their buck. But actually collaboration probably in the arts, it probably uh, is, is fails more often than it succeeds. Um, and I think the reason for that is understandable, that let's say you have a, a librettist and a composer or a, a violinist and a, and a con composer. Um, each person's bringing his or her deepest artistic convictions to the table. And um, often they conflict. They don't really harmonize. They don't really end up presenting uh, or, or generating a, an important work of art. Um, I think what I did was I went ahead and wrote my piece. 
and and then I would send the violin part to Leela along with a, a sort of synthesizer mock-up of it and um, she would comment on it and it's interesting I've gone back over some of our email exchanges and the comments were not always just about fingering you know this is awkward you know can you change the A to an F sharp and it'll be easier which you know she did say but there were actual uh, you know, structural and I'd say even compositional uh, critiques that she made early on that were, thank God she made them. Uh, because, the, you know, the very first uh, sketch I made of the first movement, it, I sort of defaulted to a, a, a certain kind of riff that I do, which I knew, I knew she could do. And she just wrote back and said, you know, this is too soon. You know, you, this isn't going to work. Uh, you really need to do more, something more lyrical here. And you know, can you imagine saying that to Beethoven? Uh, I don't know what he'd say, but boy, I'm so glad she said it to me because um, you know now we're we're both so satisfied with that particular passage and the thought of what I'd originally uh, intended would would have not it, it it would have been much less of a piece.